This is a robotic arm, a project that I developed over the summer, and it does exactly what my hand tells it to do wirelessly through this. A series of sensors integrated into a glove that sends data from that glove to the robotic arm via Bluetooth. This is one project I'm pretty proud to have finished, so I figured that it was only appropriate to document it. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing I did after deciding to build the robot arm was get its parts 3D printed right here in New Waterloo, and then ordered a bunch of the material that I needed to complete the build online. Please keep in mind that this project cost me a pretty penny, so if you think that you can find the same products at a cheaper price, please don't ignore that gut feeling and look for cheaper alternatives. When it comes to projects like these, I prefer breaking them down into smaller, integratable subsystems to allow for easier understanding of what's going on and simple troubleshooting to fix whatever issue I'm having. With that being said, the system itself is separated into two subsystems. Subsystem 1, which is composed of two smaller subsystems, those being the Bluetooth data sender and receiver, and subsystem 2, which is composed of two, again, smaller subsystems, those being the servo series for the arm joints and the last stepper motor for base rotation. Again, all the off-the-shelf components you need for this project can be found in the documentation PDF in the description below. But here's a flash of everything that you need for both systems if you don't feel like going all the way down there for now. This might seem like a trivial point of discussion, but I figured that this would be the best place to put it in the video. This project went through a few iterations when it came to the power architecture. And thanks to the help of my team lead and a few bugs that I ran into while testing the arm, I figured out that simplifying the power architecture was very necessary given that it had way too many external batteries for powering the thing. This would have shaved off a few dollars off my Amazon cart if I had known that I could have done this. That and it also made the whole operation a lot simpler and a lot safer. Heavy on the safety part. Because little did I know, LiPo batteries tend to blow up if charged again when severely underpowered or even when overcharged just in general. Once that kind of fire starts, it would have been really difficult to stop. I did this once, well, using it underpowered, but luckily for me, nothing blew up. This goes to show that when handling mid to heavy duty tech, it's always best to talk to someone who has more experience than you in the field to avoid any accidents. Especially if you're not the only one who will be put in danger if something were to happen. This was the heart and soul of the whole project, but also the most time consuming to figure out. This system basically consists of two smaller subsystems as discussed before. One, subsystem 1-A, the receiver system, which gathers data sent from its twin or other half, that being two, subsystem 1-B, the sender system. How subsystem 1-B works is that I have three flex sensors and an MPU module connected to an Arduino Nano via breadboard on a 3D printed glove that we'll be using to control the arm. All the data is processed via the Arduino Nano and is transmitted by the master HC-05 Bluetooth module to the receiver system. The flex sensors are meant to control 3 out of 6 degrees of freedom of the arm according to the difference in bend that they detect. These 3 degrees of freedom namely being the claw, the shoulders, and the elbow. And the MPU controls the other 3, namely being the up and down orientation of the wrist, the claw's rotation, and the base rotation. Now, one of the major problems that I ran into with Subsystem 1 was that it was really good at its job. The flex sensors didn't miss a single difference in bend, and the HC-05 modules were very quick to send and receive data. This presented a slight problem, one that we will discuss later, but leads us directly into Subsystem 2. If Subsystem 1 was the heart and soul of the arm, then this was the body. 
Subsystem 2-3F consists of six servo motors, which are motors that rotate to a specific angle, position, or velocity based on a control signal, and one NEMA 17 stepper motor, which turns by converting electrical pulses into precise mechanical rotations in discrete steps, accompanied by their motor drivers, all connected to subsystem 1-A, alongside a constant power source, the power supply. Now, after some assembly and motor calibration, I felt that the arm was ready for testing. Clearly, the arm was not ready for anything. After assembly of the robot, I ran into some sensitivity problems. These were foreshadowed in the past with the previously mentioned high rate of data transfer from the HC-05 modules and the flex sensors, and even during testing of individual joints. But I chose to ignore them and deal with them later. This was the later. The data that was shared was unfiltered and accounted for every small change the glove detected. This made the arm jerk a lot during testing because of how the servo motors tried to adjust to the smallest angle changes. Because of this, it was hard to move the arm perfectly due to all the inertia that was generated during these corrective movements. To fix this, I added a dead zone feature into the code that only allowed there to be a change in the angle data fed to the arm if and only there was a difference of 10 degrees between the final and initial angle fed to the motors. This looked to have fixed the problem. The arm responded much better than before. It was smoother and the motors moved less frequently. But there was another problem. The arm could not pick things up, at least not as well as I would have wanted it to. It was able to pick small things up like plastic pieces and tools, but it couldn't keep holding them for long without ruining the inner teeth alignment of the claw. This was more of a mechanical issue than anything, and could be solved by altering the design of the end effector and adding reinforced geared linkages and tighter connections between the end effector upper and lower pieces to prevent them from loosening. I could have just also added a feedback system using something like a force sensing resistor that tells the claw to stop squeezing once it realizes that there's some kind of resistance within the claw, regardless of whatever the master glove says. But as of thinking about that, I had already written about 80% of the script. And lastly, the base rotation issue. This was the most annoying to me since it was the last degree of freedom I had to nail down before I considered the arm to be complete. How it works is that I have an EMA 17 stepper motor horn sitting inside a small gear called the driving gear, which links to and rotates a larger gear called the driven gear. And in this case, the driven gear moves the arm as it moves. The base rotation worked well before, but then started malfunctioning. Connecting the Arduino now. I suspected that due to the constant use of the base rotation feature of the arm during testing, the plastic of the teeth might have worn, disabling the final degree of freedom. This could have easily been fixed by reprinting the worn out parts with more filling, or this time using a higher strength plastic. But at this point, the bill for the project was already high enough, and I knew that it worked anyway from that testing, so I just chose to leave it damaged. Even with all the problems and costs that came with the making of this robot, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Of course, there will always be room for improvement, but I'm satisfied with how it turned out for now. If you made it to this point in the video, then clearly you like what I'm doing. So please, make sure to like, subscribe, and maybe share with a friend who'd think that this kind of stuff is cool.
that's all for now and i'll see you in the next video bye